Let us appreciate our brother Tarus. He's a great moderator. And let us appreciate our drama team. They just acted my passion. God bless you so much. Today we are doing the last lesson on Engage. Engage 3. And this is lesson 4. This lesson is um, Wealth, Fame, and Power. It is the last, last lesson in your book. The aim of this lesson is to redefine the significance of wealth, fame, and power in the life of a Christian. And the objectives are there. By the end of this lesson, learners should gain knowledge and understanding of a place of wealth, fame, and power in considering oneself successful. Number two, appreciate the meaning of true success for a Christian. Number three, commit to developing a right attitude towards wealth, fame, and power. Our world, our cultures, very often measure success in material terms. The more money you have, the more you are recognized in society. Or the more people fear and respect you, even in your absence, the more successful you must be. Wealth, fame, and power, these are the things we are taught to pursue from a young age. Often, at any cost to others and even to ourselves. The Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul warned young Timothy that the love of money is the root of all evil in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. There, there are pitfalls connected to pursuing these things without God's guidance. In Mark 8, 36, the Bible says, what will profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? But there is much to benefit from wealth, fame, and power if they are properly sought and managed as tools to serve and glorify God. Matthew 6, 33, the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. We want to go in a discussion. In a discussion. And I want you to be two. To pair up. There is a question there. Uh, just in 30 seconds, discuss this question. The more wealth, fame, and power one has, then the more successful one is. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? Be in twos and discuss about it. I'll give uh, two people to respond on what they will have discussed, a uh, sister and a brother. So let's go. Amen. Yeah, let, let's hear some responses. Lift your hand up. Responses, please. We have our sister there. Thank you so much. Let's hear what they talked about in that group. That is Lucy. I can see you. Yes. 
Praise God. Amen. Yeah, I just had a discussion with my girl here, and we agreed that uh, wealth, fame, and power is not everything in life. Because you might have all of it, wealth, fame, and power, and you don't have God. You don't have a family, and you don't have peace. So I strongly disagree. Thank you. Amen. Let us appreciate them. Another group, we want now a brother. A brother. Brothers, where are you? You missed in uh, the drama skit. Don't miss again here. Where are you? <laughs> Just lift up your hand. Okay, thank you so much. We have our brother there. Thank you. Welcome. Good morning, afternoon, church. I also disagree with this because you can be having all that wealth, fame, and power, but use the wealth, fame, and power to, for example, you have diseases, you are using them for treatment and everything, therefore you're not successful in life. Thank you very much. Amen. Let us appreciate him. Thank you so much for saving the face of our brothers in the house. God bless you so much. Yeah, you will allow me to continue because of time. Let's look at some definitions. Let's look at some definitions. What is wealth? An abundant supply of valuable possessions of money. The Bible records the fact that many of the patriarchs had great wealth. King Solomon would have been considered the wealthiest man on earth during his reign and many years after. King Solomon was very, very wealthy. Uh, I may not be able to uh, translate his wealth in Kenyan money, but he had almost $2.2 trillion. That is King Solomon. We can count him one of the wealthiest men in the world. Then we had our late President Daniel Moy. He, was, he is worthy, him together with the family, he is worthy $3 billion. That is what we call wealth. And many, many more other people that you may know of. What is fame? the state of being known or talked about by many people, especially on account of notable achievements. We have heard of people who have been famous, and I know all of us here, or most of us, are familiar with uh, Eliud Kipchoge, isn't it? He's famous because of his marathon. He's the fastest marathon in the world. He has been the first, fastest uh, in, in some few days back. I don't know whether he's still holding that, but I know he is one of the fastest marathons in the world, and he's a celeb. That is Eliud Kipchoge. Then we have also the late Margaret uh, Matai, he won the first Nobel Prize, and he also founded the Green Belt Movement that made her very famous. We find a good example of the impact of fame on two people who will otherwise should have worked together for the well-being of Israel. In 1 Samuel 18:17. There are these women who are singing after David had killed Goliath. They said, Saul has slain his thousands, David his tens of thousands. These people, because of their fame, will have worked together. But because of uh, unhealthy competitions, they started fighting 
each other and they never worked together, but they both were famous because of what they did. What is power? The capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the cause of events. In the Old Testament, we see God empowering kings to wield their authority and power for generations to come. In Isaiah 45, verse 1, this is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open doors before him so so that gates will be shut. King, this King Cyrus was a pagan king whom God used to support the children of Israel. Number one, what is God's desire concerning wealth, fame, and power? One, God desires that people have the wealth, fame, and power that they have the capacity to handle. That is the desire of God. God is not against wealth, fame, and power. God desires that we may get wealth, fame, and power that we have capacity to handle, you can fill in the blank. You can fill in, continue filling in the blank. God created man to rule and have dominion over creation. He therefore has no problem with people being wealthy, famous, and powerful. The reason to why God created man was to have dominion over creation. So he doesn't have a problem in us being a famous, being wealthy, and being powerful. It is already his plan and purpose and his objective for creating mankind. In Genesis 1, 27, 28, God so created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every creature that moves on the ground. Man has been given the authority to subdue the earth. Number two, many biblical characters were very wealthy. Many biblical characters were very wealthy, famous and powerful. Many biblical characters were very wealthy, famous and powerful. Both Old and New Testament gives examples of believers that God had blessed with wealth, fame, and power. In Genesis 13, 1 to 2, the Bible says, Then Abraham went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and all that he had, and Lot with him to the south. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. This is a man who was very, very wealthy. Abraham, God bless, blessed him. He was wealthy. And when we read in Hebrews 11, 8 to 10, the Bible says, And Abraham believed God, and it was credit, credited to him as righteous. Yet he was very wealthy. He is famous and it was credited to him as righteous. It is possible, eh, brethren, we can be wealthy, we can be famous, we can be powerful, and yet righteous, just as Abraham. Number three, if God is not the center of one's life, then unmanaged wealth, fame, and power have a way of mastering and derailing 
it. If God is not the center of our wealth, that is what will happen to us. One will only live a meaningful life and enjoy their wealth, fame, and power within a healthy relationship with their creator and the giver of all things. When God blesses us with wealth, fame, and power, we must have a healthy relationship between us and him, and we will be uh, blessed. Jesus told his disciples when he was on the mountain, we call this the Sermon on the mountain or the beatitude. He said in Matthew 6, 31, 33, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows, knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom and his the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Why was Jesus Christ telling his uh, followers like this? Because sin has separated man from God. Our iniquities in Isaiah 59 verse 2 have separated us from God. So, Jesus was encouraging all his followers to seek first the kingdom of God. Seeking the kingdom of God is knowing who God is and living for him. Let's look at the implication. All wealth, fame, or power should be sought after within the param parameters of God's will for our lives. Is it the will of God for you to look for the wealth you are looking for, for the fame and the power you are looking for? Is it in the will of God? That is a question we need each one of us to, uh, to reflect on. Number two, challenges that come with wealth, fame, and power. Number one, wealth could be defined as long-term sustaining levels of money. Long-term sustaining levels of money. There are many things that are not in a person's control. The means of sustaining the same levels of money may not be within one's capacity. Another question is, even if one has one was doing what is in their ability to do. By what means will this wealth have been acquired? By what means? Have you heard of this statement? People say, money is not my problem. My problem is how to spend money. People are having a lot of money and they are having a problem on how to spend the money. How we acquire what we have in monetary terms and also uh, whatever we, we acquire as wealth. The question is, how did we acquire it? Was it in the will of God? Or was it in your own will and power? Luke 12, 15, Jesus said, Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. That is not where life is. And all of us know that life begins at 40. He praised the Lord. Yeah, so Jesus was telling his disciples that life is not in the abundance of one's 
possession. So why the greed we are seeing? Why the theft? Why the murder? Because we want to uh, acquire wealth. Some people have murdered even their biological uh, siblings because they want to acquire wealth. Why? Why the greed? Sometimes when I'm moving around, I see big portions of land that are not even cultivated. Nothing is there and it is a land of somebody, one person. And yet we have so many people who do not even have a place to construct a house. May God help us, even as we desire to have this uh, wealth, fame, and uh, power. That it will be in the will of God, that God will give these things to us after we seek him. Do your work. That is First Timothy 6, 8. Do your work, and if you have food, clothes, and a place to live, be contented. Be contented. So long as you have food, you have clothing, and you have a place to sleep, be contented. And Paul tell, told Timothy, godliness with contentment is great gain. It is great gain. And that is what he's telling us today. Fame is about being well known and highly recognized. Times and seasons change. Nota, noto, notoriety and public recognition can fade and even the most famous person is forgotten. How many of us remember uh, the president of Uganda, the former president of Uganda, Idi Amini? How many of us heard about him? Yes, many of us heard about him. Uh, what I remember about him is that he collected all the cripples and went and threw them into the lake. And they perished like that. And he became famous because of that evil. Is he still alive? He's not still alive. In spite of all that he did to the people of God. And how many of us still remember this man called Osama bin Laden? This was the founder of this uh, movement called Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda movement. How many of us had? I heard about him. I saw him in the media. He, and he did, he did things. He killed people. He destroyed property. He terrorized. He did all the bad things. And he became famous. Is he still alive today? Are people still talking about him? Nobody talks about him. And I don't even remember years. Even if I go the 50 year from where I am, I don't remember remembering that man again. He went and he was forgotten. Yet he was famous. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 8, eventually, a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. Joseph, we know very well the impact that he made in Egypt, and he was second to Pharaoh. But the Bible records that another king came who knew nothing about Joseph or anything he had done. And what is, what is this telling us? It is telling us that life on earth is very brief. Life on earth is very brief. Much as we desire to, ha to acquire this fame, we want to be wealthy, we want to be uh, powerful, we will not stay here forever. We have had people ahead of us who have done, who have had these things, they have been famous, they have been powerful, they have been wealthy, and yet they are no more. As Christians, we need to know this world is not 
our home. Our home is in heaven. Number three, power is defined as the, as the ability to rule over people. The ability to rule over people. And many of us, we will want to be powerful. We will want to be powerful. Many of us, we are ambitious. We want to rule over people. What are the right ways of achieving success? God created us with the ability to be successful. We have that ability within us to be successful. In knowing and obeying God, we find true fulfillment and success. In knowing and obeying God, that is where we find true fulfillment and success. But sometimes we fall into the temptation of uh, uh, looking for things in which we can never find fulfillment. These things are good, yes. We are supposed to look for them, but under the will of God. As Christians, we are free, but we are not free to do other things. Deuteronomy 8, 17 to 18, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Remember the Lord your God, the wealth you are having. He is the one who gave you the ability to make that wealth. It is God who gives us the ability. And if he is the one who gives us the ability, then we need to submit our wealth, our power, and our fame under him. Let's look at the implication. God's grace is only availed for the person in the perfect will of God. God only gives his children wealth, power, and positions that will bring him glory. God does not give things that do not give, bring him glory. He is the one who gives us these things. He gives his children wealth. He gives them power, positions that will bring him glory. That means when we acquire these things, we are supposed to use them to bring glory to God. But people have acquired these things using wrong means. They have killed they have abused people. They have hurt people. People have fought others, even at the place of work. I know some of you have uh, experienced uh, terrible things at the place of work because people who are because of people who are struggling to get a uh, power in a wrong way, or they are they're struggling to get fame in a wrong way. So they use other. They use, they, they, they use other people. A lot of incitements, even in our offices. You hate somebody for nothing. That is not the glory of God. God wants us when we get these things, we use them to the glory of God. He wants us to use power to raise up many, many other leaders because that is his purposes on earth. He has come to make disciples. Somebody was saying that um, when you dig a hole, when you dig a hole, people are always busy digging for others' hole. Don't dig it to go deep. Dig it to go where even you, when you, you enter in, you will survive. Yes. You remember the story of Haman and Mordecai? What he did, 
what he wanted Mordecai to go through. He went there and he never survived. May God help us as Christians, even as we get these things, we may use them to the honor and the glory of God. Number three, what should be the Christian view on the wealth, fame, and power? One, success can be elusive and at times addictive. These things are addictive. Everyone strives for success. Yet some people are left feeling like failures because they never quite get hold of what they will perceive as success. No one has ever felt that they have had enough wealth, fame, or power. I want to thank God for Kenya, where God has brought us uh, in our democracy, that our leaders are able to hand over power peacefully. Let us appreciate the Lord for doing that in our nation. I know because we are praying, we pray, that is why those things are happening. But we have countries that are suffering. People don't want to hand over power. They want to leave that uh, position when they are going to the grave. It is so addictive. Fame is addictive. How many medals have people won who are famous celebrities and they still go for more and more? There is no day they say, eh, now it is enough. How many people have said, now I have enough wealth? If you've had any person of the, uh, that caliber, please come and we share. People want to have more and more. They want to have more and more. So these things are addictive. Genesis 13, 10 to 11, Look, Lot looked around and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan toward Zora was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So, Lord, so Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out toward the east. The two men parted company. This is a story between Abraham and his nephew, Lot. They were so blessed and until at some point their workers started fighting. And Abraham said, it is better for us to part ways. And when Lot was asked, when Lot was asked which portion to take by the Lord, he went and took the best, which was Sodom and Gomorrah, and left his uncle Abraham in the desert. Where Abraham went, it was a desert. But something surprising happened. Where Lord chose Sodom and Gomorrah was finally destroyed by God. May God help us even in the choices that we make. That is telling us that even in the choices that we make daily, we need to ask God to help us not to make uh, choices out of selfish ambitions, our own selfish ambition. Luke 12, 15, and he said to them, take heed and be aware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Number two, redefining success in line with the word of God gives one freedom. In every generation, success has been defined in terms of the much wealth, fame, or, and the power that one has. Is this true or is there more to being successful? In the book of Joshua, chapter 1, 8, God told Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. 
That is the definition of success according to our God. That this book of the law shall not depart from our mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. And when we do that, we will be, we will be prosperous and we will succeed. Amen. Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. That is the kingdom that we are told to seek. The kingdom of God is something very precious. It is something that you cannot easily attain. When a man uh, had this nice field, he went and sold everything they had and came and bought that, uh, that field. That is how the kingdom of God is. And Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The kingdom of God is like treasure in our generation. When we find the kingdom of God, we have found everything. When we find the kingdom of God, we have found fame. When we find the kingdom of God, we have found wealth. When we find the kingdom of God, we have found power. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Number one thing, seek first the kingdom. Then number two, all the wealth, all the fame, all the pleasure will be added unto us. Success in life is not about what we do. What we do or Okay, success in life is not about what we do or the possessions we accumulate, but who we are in the Lord, who we are in the Lord, that is success. How much wealth, fame, or power should one have to qualify to be called successful? And what is real, true success? This is a question of what is important in life. For many people, it is a slippery slope to climb your way to success. It is often intoxicating and can become addictive. Take stock of the priorities of your life and how much you value success over these priorities. Matthew 16, 26. Jesus said, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul, is anything worth more than your soul? That is the question. A Christian should always find out God's will and position when handling wealth, power, and fame. Sometimes God may not allow one to be famous, wealthy, or even powerful for his purposes in their life to be fulfilled. Maybe somebody like me. He wants his purposes to be fulfilled uh, through my life. That is why he cannot allow that. But for you, God has allowed. It is important not to be drawn into the temptation to pursue wealth, fame, or power at any cost. Wealth, fame, and power can be useful in the building up of God's kingdom on earth, but God must first work on a person's character and, sub and submission to his will before entrusting them with wealth, fame, and power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are two things here. One, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto 
you. That is number one. Number two, wealth, fame, and power shall be added unto you. It is good for us to be wealthy as believers. We want to be wealthy. We want God to bless all of us. That is the will of God. He said, subdue the earth. And part of uh, one way of subduing the earth is having wealth. We want wealth. We want you people to be famous. Eh? Like Kipchoge, be famous. Be known. You know, once you are famous and you take this word of God and you stand up to preach, you will preach to many people more than the ones I'm preaching to today. It is good to be famous. And it is good to be, to be what? To be powerful. It is good to be powerful because you are going to influence many people. So don't fear. Don't fear to be powerful. Keep aspiring. Even in your place of work, aspire to be powerful. I was giving a testimony in the first service. Uh, one time we went to Nairobi and we were told an elder was hosting us. And when we went in her car, she told us to pray. And we started praying and she prayed in tongues and we also joined her and we talked in tongues for a long time. From Valley Road to Runda, we were just praying in tongues. When we entered her house, all her workers came came and one was leading our, our chorus, the others were worshiping and glorifying God. And we prayed for about one hour. I almost got tired. But that is the standard she has set. She is wealthy, she is powerful. Then, next day in the morning, she has a company, a company in town. So she took us to that company. When we reached there, all her workers had come. That was around six. All the workers had come. They were praying. They were rolling on the floor. They were crying, seeking the face of God. And I really glorified God and said, oh my, what an elder. What an elder. We need to be visiting our elders. Praise the Lord. God is really working through our elders. What an impact. You are powerful, you are wealthy, and you are famous. You are impacting the whole world. God is able to give us the things we ask for. We want you people to be wealthy. Be wealthy, be wealthy. We want to get out of this. Uh, is it? We want to get out of here and go in a beautiful sanctuary. Praise the Lord. And it is you people to bring the wealth. We want you people to be wealthy. We want you to be powerful and influence as many people as possible and bring them to church. We want you to be famous. Be famous. Fly around and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, church. Amen, amen. God is ready to bless all of us today because that is the purpose to why he created us. Let us stand up. 